Good morning. It's great that you're back with us for our devotional study on the book of Acts. We're in chapter 9, and we meet a man called Saul of Tarsus. We heard about him at the end of chapter 7 and going into chapter 8, that Saul was the one who had been appointed by the Jewish leadership to authorize the stoning of Stephen, and the witnesses laid their cloaks at his feet. He then began a great persecution in the beginning of chapter 8, and the Christians were scattered throughout Samaria gossiping the gospel, and we heard about Philip's ministry yesterday. But today we learn that Paul, uh, Saul wanted to continue now with the persecution. Let's read from Acts chapter 9. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. So he's on his way to persecute Christians, and Christianity at the moment is called the way. The first time we've heard this phrase. You can see why it was called that. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. So that Christianity is called the way. And let's carry on then. So Paul moves on to Damascus. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I'm Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you'll be told what you must do. So God, or Jesus, appears to him physically in a blinding light and says, Why are you persecuting me, Saul? Who are you, says Saul? I'm Jesus. I mean, that's an incredible, incredible appearance as Jesus begins to work in this man's life. Anyway, we carry on. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he couldn't see nothing. So they led him by the hand into Damascus, and for three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. So you can imagine he's a, a leader, a Pharisee, going to persecute the Christians, and now when he eventually arrives in Damascus, he's blind and having to be led by his hand and spends a few days in a house in Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision. Ananias, yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him and restore his sight. Lord Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priest to arrest all who call on your name. Enter Ananias. Again, a disciple of the Lord's who's called to have a divine appointment with Saul of Tarsus. And he has an excuse, a valid excuse to say, listen, this Saul of Tarsus has come here to arrest Christians. He's got letters of authority from the leadership in Jerusalem. But often when God calls us to go, we must go. We can have excuses and some of them almost justifiable and yet and, and seeming to be unreasonable. But when God says go, we must go. I once had an incident where I had an atheist friend who was a tennis player of Shamba Bandura, and he um, didn't believe in Christ. He was quite clear on that, and yet he had a brain tumor and was dying of a brain tumor. And we went to go and visit him in hospital, but his mother wouldn't allow anyone to get close. She always stood right beside him. She was obviously the reason, perhaps, for his atheism. But one day, towards the end of his life, suddenly we got a prompting to go. It was lunchtime, not an ideal time to visit a hospital. But Brenda and I responded immediately. We went to the hospital, and it was the only time really that his mother hadn't been standing guard over him. I shared the gospel with him, and he said, Rory, I can't become a Christian now. I've spent my whole life as an atheist. And I said, nevertheless, Jesus loves you, and he's throwing you a, a life a tube. You're in the water drowning. Don't argue the toss. Uh, receive life in Jesus' name. He did. He gave his heart to Christ. After I left, he went into a coma. No one else saw him alive. And I believe I'll see that man in heaven. Divine appointments. Be aware of those times when God says move. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to carry my name before the Gentiles and their kings and before the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. There's the reason why Jesus has appeared to him personally. This man, Saul of Tarsus, is going to become Paul, the great evangelist, the apostle who would minister widely in Asia Minor all the way 
to the capital of the empire, Rome. He would write a good chunk of the New Testament. He's my chosen instrument for the Gentiles. God is in control. He's sovereign. Saul has been prepared as an educated Greek-speaking Pharisee to go and share the gospel and debate with the Greeks and tell them about Jesus. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again. He got up and was baptized and after taking some food he regained his strength. So Ananias has used a disciple of Jesus in Damascus to lay hands and pray for healing for Saul and to pray for the Saul to be filled with the Holy Spirit that he can be used by God. But the story ends, in fact it doesn't end, it's the start of Saul's ministry, but today's passage ends with this, Saul spent several days with the disciples in Damascus, at once he began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus is the Son of God. Thus begins the ministry of Paul, the great apostle, to the Gentiles. Friends, the application is you have to be ready not only to listen and respond to God's prompting, but when God has touched your life, you've got to get out and share the gospel. For some reason, you might not do that anymore. You've lost your first love, your passion. The Spirit is no longer filling you on a daily basis, and you don't feel the desire to go and tell people. Let the Spirit of God touch you as he touched Paul and go and tell people with joy and passion about what Christ has done for you. Come, let's pray. God, forgive us for holding back when we should be talking about you. We pray, anoint us with your spirit. Fill us again that we can be used, as Saul was, to preach the gospel as we restart our ministry to others and touch the lives of others. We pray this in your precious name. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow.